So hey guys and welcome to a new stream with me, Supernatus, of uh, Discworld. For some reason my audio feels very odd. This is the Discworld adventure game on PlayStation 1. Uh, from Perfect Ten Productions. Actually a very good game. Uh, based around obviously Terry Pratchett, Dis Terry Pratchett's Discworld range of... Uh, novels. Uh, there are three games in the series. This is the first, uh, where we're introduced to the world and the characters. And for some reason my headphones are making an extremely annoying noise. I don't know if that noise is coming to you. But here we go. Let's learn about the world. One for the fly earthers out there. It's uh, elephants all the way down, though. That's what I heard. I'm actually monitoring on my headphones just a bit loud. That's all I can think of. Still, never mind. Here we are. Discworld. These guys are summoning a dragon. They shout dragon repeatedly. Because didn't you know that's how you summon a dragon? I thought it was common knowledge, no? Yeah. My mistake. <laughs> Just a load of guys in black robes, as you expect. Summoning entities and creatures. Beyond. I think I can, I can speak over this bit at least quite confidently because, uh, you know, they're clearly uh, just saying dragon repeatedly. I think the playthrough is a bit glitchy. Now, uh, I did also have a copy of this on Windows. But the trouble with it is that it was a DOS game, and I have got DOSBox running, but it doesn't seem to want to run that. Uh, it doesn't seem to want to run it on ScumVM, which, believe it or not, uh, at least the first Discworld game does work on. Um, although it's not obviously a LucasArts game. And here we are, Luke. The Grim Reaper. I like this as well because I feel like these games really resembled the, the Monkey Island games quite a bit in appearance in style, you know? Like someone paid quite a bit of attention to those games and thought well, that's what we need to use to do a Discworld game. And I would say at least the first two games were very good. I enjoyed the third game too, but this to me is probably the best. And the greatest thing about it is the way that you uh, the way that you go about things and the funny little things that are going on around you, you know? I'm aware that I'm saying you know quite a lot, so I try not to <laughs> say it too, too many times. Yeah, it likes his curry, he does. So right now, uh, this is really just the introduction to the game. So this guy's going to walk down the street, he's going to be mugged. But they're, but they're going to be surprised by something else arriving. Strange, strange little man. Yeah, just, you know, easy. Well established ritual <laughs> of your actual bugger and victim relationship. He's explaining it perfectly, isn't he? Well, uh, not great uh, Michael Caine impression there, but you know. <laughs> um, in terms of voice acting, um, Eric Idle from Monty Python has quite a bit in this. And a few actually decent. Um, 
people voice this. I'm going to actually remind myself exactly who. Um, that was the dragon. So let's just remind myself. Here we are at the Unseen University. A David Attenborough voice will uh, tell you what's going on. Well, I check something. I was going to say the, the the main thing about the game is that it does kind of roughly follow the guards' guards storyline, and it does have a lot of other elements involved. Um, so yeah, voice wise. With all these rumors of a dragon. But sir, dragons don't exist. Yeah. At least, not unless people believe in them. <laughs> quite, quite. Nevertheless, with all these rumors of a dragon on the rampage, the wizards of Unseen hmm. University must fulfill their civic responsibility. We must seek out this dragon and destroy it. Oh, that's interesting. Yes, but how? Apparently, um... Leave the how. Simon the Sorcerer has just sprung up from, uh, I know from I Adventure Soft wanting to actually do a Discworld game. But Terry Pratchett wasn't 100% sure he wanted to allow it. But yes, yeah, so he's going to reach Rich Rincewind. Oh, Richwind? Rincewind, and soon we will begin to play. Once we're woken up. Eric Idol is Rincewind. Um, yeah, it's also got people like Tony Robinson in it. Um, Rob Bryden, Michael Planer, Robert Lou Allen, uh, John Pertwee had a voice in it. So yeah, a decent, a decent little cast of um, kind of British comedy talent at the time. Which definitely helped to make it, I think, as good a game as it is. Uh, here we go. Yeah, it's a little magic twinkle at the top. And now we can move. So, first thing we want to do is we want to open our wand. How do we do that? We have a door knob. It's magic, you see. Special kind of magic. That noise is really annoying. I don't actually know if you can hear it though. That's what we do. Open the menu, and then you've got your stuff just tucked away nicely. Um, and let's get out of here. Our, chair, our uh, luggage will wake up and follow us eventually. If we would just go. Yes, Portalis Exodus. 
See, I'm not a wizard for nothing, you know. He's not a wizard for nothing. No, it probably cost him a decent amount of money. There we go. So let's go walking out here. Our luggage isn't following us. Hmm. Okay, so we gotta go down the stairs. And it's been down. There we go. Down the stairs we go. Right to the bottom, please. couple of things we need to do before we continue properly through things. Is it here I need to go? There's a closet that we need to get that we need to go into. Not the Arch Chancellor's room, no. Yeah, that's as far as we can go in that, I think. Oh it's down there, there we go. I think I can just click on that and walk to it. There we go. Some things we need to pick up there. One. There's one or two things there we need to pick up. And the main one being this room. I'm trying to remember how I uh, how did I get my inventory open? Oh, there we go. And there we go. We needed that room so that we can continue on. Basically, I needed the broom so that we can get our luggage to wake up. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I remembered that. The luggage is a little bit. Uh, well, let's be honest. If you know, if you know uh, this world, you know exactly what the luggage is all about. It's evil. It's not evil, but it's been known to harm people. Make him run by just going that little bit faster. Get into Rincewind's room. Open our thing. Care to step outside and shut the door behind you. I care to step outside and shut the door behind me. Yes. That doesn't work. No, it doesn't, you're right. Straw tied to a stick. That's that's right, straw tied to a stick. Technically, I suppose it is a broom. No, it's not an elephant, is it? This is a really bad idea. Well, not really, but... Wakey, wakey. There he is with his many legs. It just gives us a bit more storage space more than anything else. Controls are something to remember because they are they are a little bit awkward if you've not uh, played the thing in a little while. Come on, Rincewood, down the stairs you go. So where are we going? I'm glad you asked. But first, we're going to the Arch Chancellor's room, which is on this level, because that's the one that wanted to speak to us. Here we go. Into the Arch Chancellor's room we go to learn what he wants us to do. Ah, if it isn't young he knew what my name was before. He would call me Breakwind. Well, yes, Rincewind. A cowardly wizard. It's not particularly very good at magic. No doubt you've been hearing all sorts of rumours about this dragon. Just the kind you need. ...is terrorising the town. Uh, uh, dragon? As in the, uh, classic... Yeah, like a coward. breathing city-toasting... The very same. Shut up! <laughs> yes, pretty much. Shut up! Vain, ...like shiny object, left space of kidney. And what we need to do is to ensure that the unseen universe... Is uh, so he wants the unseen university to be properly represented in disposing of it. Simply slays the wretched thing without 
So he's going to get Rincewood to go along. That makes sense. Actually, sir, what are wizards for? It's a good question. Yes, they are behind big dinners. If you'd like to be fed, beat this dragon up. Shut up. Yes. Yeah, well, okay. Agreed. Shut up! Don't interest me. No way ask me questions, he doesn't want that answer. Run down the library and fetch me a copy of Pepperwinkle's concise compendium of dragons' lairs. Once we've read that, the compendium of dragons' lairs. You still here? Standing around like something unhygienic. No, I'm on my way. Do it now! Okay, I'll do it now then. I'll go downstairs to the library. We saw it when we were walking around. It's there. I meet the librarian. Poor guy. Here he is. One of there he is. Let's speak to him. So you got a few different options in terms of how to speak to people. Uh, kind of comedy question, and so let's go through them all. Hello, Ooh. you're not in charge here, are you? Mm. <laughs> well, see. Careful what you say, Rinsewind. Look, um, I don't know if you're quite the person that I want to see. Ooh. Yes, well, it, it's hard, it's hard to explain what he wants to. Mm-hmm. Yes. Um. <laughs> he doesn't. You don't know how to speak orangutan. Well, this is wonderful. Oh, I never knew. Oh, oh. Yeah, don't, don't, don't call him a monkey. Did you get the number of that donkey cop? It's a pretty common uh, line that he uses. Uh, the more comedic line. Oh, you're going to get smacked in the head again. And he's going to say the same line. Did you get the number of that donkey cot? Yeah, it would have been nice. That is one thing. It would have been nice if they had um, just had a few May different I lines of text. Take a book from the library, please. Ooh, ooh. Excuse me. Ooh, ooh, ooh. I see. Um, I need something in order to take well, obviously, out a you need a library card, don't you? Toothpaste, fingers, gloves, something in your hand. A dentist, halitosis. You want? You want some mouthwash? That's it. You he want wants some, some mouthwash. mouthwash, does he? I'm sorry, but I'm already spoken for. <laughs> oh, a library card. Yeah. <laughs> Why did you say so in the first place? What happens if I just barge in without giving you a library card? And you'll smack you in the head. Now look, unfortunately, I don't have one, Ape. Ooh. Oh, that's a good to see. Ape on, yeah, upon my person. Yes, upon my person. But apes, I okay. Yeah, you did. <laughs> you fool. You foolish man. Did you get the number of that donkey cot? Yeah, so... It's preferable if you didn't hey, use that later. Whose monkey is this? Oops. I'm just using every line because I want him to get beaten over the head. Did you get the number of that donkey cart? Did you get the number of that donkey cart? Now, what about this book? There's not much point asking him because he's not going to give it to us. Could you get me a tome called Featherwinkle's Consars Compendium of Dragon's Lairs? I see. Do you? Yes. Ah, yes, I suppose so. Mm -hmm. what? There is a way that we can get him Look, to get us the book. I'm going to stop speaking to him now. Uh, there is something in the luggage we can give him that plays on this a little bit. But, you know. Book, book. Yes, I've given up. No, not, not given. Monkey. Hey, oh, damn! <laughs> just, just a silly. Did you 
get the number of that donkey cop. Right, I'll say bye bye to him for a moment. This seems like a good cue to cease this whole silly conversation. It does. Now, in the luggage. We'll find a banana. If we take that banana and give it to him, then he should get us the book. Excuse me, my dear sir. Could you, you get me a tone called Featherwinkle? We'll make his way around the library with the book. There you go, see? No worries. There's a shifty guy down there, Luke. Just looking around. And there we have the book we were asked to pick up. So we'll put it in there. Hmm. Featherwinkle's concise compendium of dragon's lairs. That's what you were asked to Detect bring. Dragons from a comfortable distance or your money back. Well, you can detect that dragon from a very comfortable distance. It's outside your window. And you don't need to go anywhere. So back upstairs we go with a book. Why he couldn't have got someone else to bring him the book while he was waiting for me, I don't know. But, you know, regardless, we'll go up and we'll speak to him about this book of dragon's lairs. There's the dining room as well. Is quite... Uh, Quite good to have a look at, maybe, at some point. For now, let's hit the Arch-Chancellor's room. However, we don't need to go to the dining room straight away. Uh, what I will do is go into my luggage, pick up that book, close the luggage, and give that to the Arch-Chancellor. And it's going to repeatedly call me Breakwind too. Very nice. We now have the formula to construct Breakwind Mentos, never failing Dragon's Lair Revealer. Good. With the device in our hands, we'll be able to track the creature and trap it like a wildebeest. You mean like a rat, sir? Really? It would be much easier. And what would those elements be? I'll see that your performance is brought to the attention of the university board when we reveal your draft. Great. We may only <laughs> Yeah, okay, so they're still gonna reduce it. I've never told you of my ambition to be a yak. It could be arranged, Rinswind. He's not even listening. Now gonna move on. Oh he is listening. A staff of tumultuous thermaturgy. Some sort of fire staff. Yeah. A coil. An, an imp. And a camera, yeah. A sample of dragon's breath. Dragon's breath? Yes. Any problem? Well, you know. Other than the fact that you need to be within range of an actual dragon. Yeah, yeah, no, no. No problem. But there we go. Put the book back. Into the luggage. And be on our merry way. Yeah, we've seen... Oh. So there we are. That's, uh, that's the beginning of our adventure. So first things first, we need to go into the dining room. And there's a lot to uh, take in in the dining room. A lot of very senile old men sitting around. Mainly eating. It's the lecturer in recent rooms. In blue. They're all in blue, really. That's the Dean. And eventually, that's the Bursar, and that's Wendell Poons. They're all a bit mad. And he's blasting stuff around at us. 
So let's speak to the lecturer in recent rooms. Good day, sirs. Yes. Is it? <laughs> so you say. What with the bottom falling out of the tapioca market. You're off again. Past the dried frog pills. <laughs> yeah, dried Lap frog pills. Old boy valve. It's all this dragon business. That's what's doing it. Snatching tapioca out of the mouths of the deserved <laughs> elderly. Oh yeah, I'm sure that the dragons are snatching tapioca. <laughs> well, it's true. Things? No, a real dragon, not one of those little march tidbits. Yeah, not those little dragons. Oh, there's no such thing. Dragons only exist if you believe in them. I don't believe in them, they don't believe in me. Nice to meet Tony Robinson there. So let's speak to him in a joking Another manner. Busy day in the faculty, gentlemen. We are cogitating. It's more a sort of sarcastic oh, question. Right, said in a knowing tone of voice, Mag Mag. Cogitating, my lad, is that process by which the wise make space inside their is brains it? for more ideas. So you say. You make more space for ideas by sitting on your backside, sipping a cup of milky tea. Hit him. Hit him. <laughs> my boy, me. ideas are normally sold by value, not by weight. It's best to let them settle so you can find more room in the top. Makes sense. We have wisdom and you do not. For instance, this is the action of a clever man. <laughs> oh, wait. What is? Drawing something rude. Paper airplane. What's so clever about writing down the word monkey? Uh oh. <laughs> of course. And he's going to ask the same question again. Wisdom, my lad, is never or not. Well, I didn't know you were selling it by the pound. <laughs> he was. Not. So can Excuse you tell me, me anything useful? Where might I go to find the patrician? Well, well. Don't be an idiot, boy. Just look for the palace. Yeah. Is he approachable? Can you actually <laughs> talk to him? I wouldn't. Oh, yes. But he's a mean man with a word. Careful if he uses sarcasm on you, and for heaven's sake, run for it. Uh, he resorts to oh, irony. Yeah, you don't want to be uh, entering a war of words with a patrician. I, I would say. Always have to be this way. What way? Well, this way. What, messy. It's chaos. It's it's undisciplined. It's as if I'm thrashing about in a sea of questions, like, like uh, I'm screaming out against soul destroying. Son, what are you doing? A little bit. <laughs> Just a little. Mm. Mm. No. Not. Thankfully, that's not my problem. So <laughs> you will. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Crazy. Crazy people. Uh, okay, so let's ask about my luggage. Does anyone know why this luggage keeps following me? Yeah, because it's uh, that, attuned to you. Sapien Pearwood, as they say. Yeah. There we go. The chest is in fact the luggage. Yeah. The luggage is made of silk and pearl. It is. Once it attaches itself to somebody, it will follow that person everywhere, just like the little puppy. It is like a runaway suitcase, albeit. Except it's not a runaway suitcase because it in will stay with you. The luggage is a convenience forever. Not to mention a convenient homicidal maniac. Exactly, it is. You do not want to be bothering the luggage. Uh, I want to finish speaking to him. Do I want to ask him about that though? Like really, he's going to use the word again, isn't he? And he's going to get hit. Let's see. Why is the librarian a monkey? There we go. 
because somebody changed them into one. It's neat. You get the number of that donkey cop. He's not a one of them. He's an orangutan. But it's yeah, the same exactly. thing. No, no, no. The actual orangutan is one of the great apes. Exactly. An aboriginal denizen of the subtropical rainforest. If you ever want to go far in life, you must learn the value of proper nomenclature. That is true. But what's the difference between calling him oh, a oh, 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 oh. oh, he's going to get hit again. Well, if you call him one, you don't get hit in the head. I think that should be pretty obvious. In general terms, the difference is whether you keep your teeth in your yeah. or in your hand. But how did it happen? I mean, should we really let our boreal subtropical fauna it's a good be question. the of a major national library? He's pretty tough. But he was human once. Really? Yeah. Part of a magical accident. Very tragic, you see, but there it is. I can't remember if you can have different conversations with each of them. Doesn't he want to be turned back into a human? Is that what they're calling it these days? The long arms, the prehensile toes, and the right to scratch himself in the reference section. Yeah, see. I say he just likes running. Apparently, that's what he's calling it these days. I mean, I would. I don't think you can actually ask any separate questions of any of them, really. I, I believe I'm going to double check by by trying to talk to the dean. I believe you just ask the same questions. But I could be entirely incorrect. I think I am actually. There's just so much text and so much conversation that you have to listen to. Which is what extends the gameplay time, I suppose. Yeah, don't try because you're rubbish. Well, young fella, my wallpaper. Well, young fella, my wallpaper. I'd say that of all lessons in life, always learn to expect the unexpected. That's helpful. Hmm. But if I expect it, then it isn't unexpected. Exactly. Well, Except you don't know what it is. Can't be unexpected so, if it actually is expected. But if it's unexpected, how do you know what to expect? In which case. My advice to you is to always expect <laughs> the expected. Does that clear? Makes sense. I expect so. Yeah. <laughs> expect so. So you're all faculty heads? The giants of wizardry? The giants this of wizardry. It. This is as good as life gets. Pretty much. Contemplating promotion? No, I'm contemplating the Remember rightly, the Wendell Pins isn't much worth talking to. Because he's, uh... Listen. I mean, they're all a bit One mad, thing I've but meant to ask, these, uh, these dresses, we wear, robes. Aren't they, um, are they strictly necessary? I mean, you could walk around naked if you want. The but robes, lad, are symbolic of our dedication. Are they? You see, this is not so much a calling as a profession as a condition of mind. Senility, By yeah. Long robes, we imply a somnambulistic state. Well, it's sleepwalking. I'm not sure you want to be everyone to think you dream you're sleepwalking. Like, say, as high as this hat. Well, the hat too. It's quite the noise luckiness of tarts. Or it might imply that we should have let our mothers keep on dressing us. It might. What's more, it keeps young with the snappers like me from running off. Eh? Do you want to walk the streets looking like a refugee from a somewhat suspicious place? Point taken. No, not really. Yeah, you're probably right. Is this all you do all day? Just sit and make a public news report. It is. I'm reserving my power. What? Eternally. No, you can't. Really? What do you see? Not much. <laughs> big print brush. Well, or it's just excuse a, me, I a think fool. there's someone calling me. I don't think there is. I think you should definitely stop, stop speaking to him. I don't think we'll get much more out of the Burser. Uh, he's even madder than the other two. So, you're the Burser. Mm -hmm. What does a Burser do exactly? Gives out money. Well, it's a very important job. Account, expenditure, occasional bounce of irrationality, the assessment of grants. Mm -hmm. Well, it, it sounds a bit... Well, boring, doesn't it? To you. That's the job's main attraction, my surgical son. No excitement. Since wizards are naturally extremely long-lived, that means the only way to get promoted is to assassinate your superiors. They've been popping off like mayflies around here for some seasons. 
Yeah. Sometimes we've got wait for it. More wizards than wizards. <laughs> Is that right? They're in no danger from me. I never really thought about promotion. Uh, don't, don't worry, I don't think you've got you much ah! chance of it. Oh well. Yeah, the, the, the joke wasn't great. <laughs> That's a good question, not me. The noise in my headphones is really annoying me. Uh, what will we ask? So you're the uh, the, best. the accountant. Oh, thank you. I don't just forgot the name of someone useful. Mm. <laughs> Careful. You're the first, sir, aren't you? Yeah, he's right. told you that. No corrected that. And and I'm quite totally insane, you know. Yes. I do know that. Giant frog. But that's just accounting. Surely to hold a major position in a wizard's university, you Which must be able to perform magic. After all, that's what the place is all about. Magic is all very well, young Sink Disposal yeah. Unit, but mathematics is the more powerful art. Oh, come on. You don't believe me? Very well, Mr. So-called Scented Furniture Polish. Mm -mm. Get to work while I make your grant disappear. No, that's fine. Thank you. Right, well, don't be a stranger. They're Cheers. just really naughty old men. Let's have a chat to him before anything else happens. Before we get blasted. Hey! Girl! What's a girl doing in here? It's not a girl. I'm not a girl? Why are you wearing a dress? What? It's a wizard's robe, not a dress. I knew a girl could be a splendid very good at pickling. They're very good at pickling eels, you know. Oh, okay. Was she? That's good to know, I guess. Pickling? Oh, how fascinating. Yeah. Pickled? Who's pickled? Well. No one's pickled. You started it. I don't even like pickles. What? Oh, they were wonderful pickles. <laughs> how dare you cast me? <laughs> Aspersions on the pickles. Damn, I've, I've lost it. What were we talking about again? Pickles. Um, pickles? What's pickles? What? Well, what do you mean? Pickles. Well, the eels were pickled, weren't they? Mm. What? Pickled eels? <laughs> Damn them, yes. I told them to lock that liquor cup. <laughs> Go on, boy, get up. Sorry, I just ridiculous no, comedy pickles. just makes me laugh. Pickles? Pickles? Or try the kitchen. <laughs> get up. There's no point Stop talking to him at all. We'll go with this one just because, you know, sometimes these are funny. I just want to find somebody who can talk a little sense. Sense? Perfumes? Oh, I'll not have it. Who knows? No, <laughs> he won't have it. Dallying with women folk on the premises is against the rules. Otherwise, we'd, we'd, we'd all be doing it. <laughs> you young bathro, I have you defrocked for this. What? Look, I haven't done a thing, honestly. What? We're about to annoy him in a minute. Well. How can you be a man of the world if you've never sampled the finer things in life? He's a strange man. Women, wizard stays. Hold on. What if I go and do Pickles. That? You said you defrocked me. It won't do me. It just <laughs> won't do you. Young teasers like you coming here and, and taking off their frocks. What? <laughs> I, I won't stop. <laughs> oh my god. The city is getting into, into a fine old pickle. Yeah, oh, I agree. Don't get started on the pickles again. <laughs> Who's pickled? Pickles. Don't eat pickles if you're wearing a dress. You'll stay them. Why are you That's good advice. I'm not. Leave me alone, you crazy old this man. This seems like a good cue to cease this whole silly conversation. It does. Who's that guy over there? He's the senior wrangler. What I want is this uh, staff, though, so... I need to use this broom and swap it with his staff when he's not looking. So I pop off the uh, head and we'll have a magical staff. We can just dump in our luggage. 
be on our way, and he shouldn't be blasting anybody with magic anymore. Uh, see if he'll talk to us. I don't think he will. He's asleep. I've absolutely no desire to talk to that person at this time. And there's no one else to talk to in here, so we can leave. The good news is he won't be blasting anybody anymore, I hope. And we will continue outside. Probably not going to record a huge amount of this at once. Uh, we'll do kind of a smaller bit at a time. We don't need to go into the kitchen right now, but we will have to return there later. Uh, we do have to go outside. The exit is over here. Out the main door we go. Head to the main entrance, which is this way, but we need to chat to him first. The apprentice wizard. How do you open the gate? They've changed the wash name. The hand wriggles. It's a whole new spell. The hand wriggles, you know, handshakes. The, spell. oh, the spell's a secret. Is it? How'd I get out of here? I need to leave. The hand wriggles, please. Yeah, mm. yeah, right. Look. You just wiggle them like this. Go on then, show me. And that is how you open the gate. Like this. Can you just open the gate for me? He just blasted himself with his own magic. If you could call it that. All he did was put a frog in his mouth. Not ideal. Yeah, almost. Now try it like that. Like this. You can't rinse when you're rubbish at doing magic. Right you are, son. <laughs> now if you'll excuse me, I think I'd like a nice lie down. But what about the gate? Aren't you gonna guard it? No, oh, he's not. Done, exactly. <laughs> Sorry, buddy. You deserved that. No, sorry, I didn't. What's that you're eating then? Prunes. Prunes, yeah. Just a little nourishment to tide me through till lunch. Oh, lovely. Time. Can I have one before I go? Having one before you go <laughs> is the whole point of prunes. It is, yeah, you're right. And no, you I'm not allowed one. Okay. Well. Well, I'll catch you later then. I could try and take them, but I'm not going to. What I am going to do is pick up this frog. There he is. We'll open our luggage. Oh, excuse me. Sorry. There we go. And I will open the gate. Except I'm not sure we can. Not with magic, anyway. Out we go. So we're outside. In Ankh-Morpork. Bisected by the River Ankh, the city of Ankh-Morpork is the oldest existing city on the Discworld. Yeah. It is really two cities. Proud Ankh. Turnwise of the river mm -hmm. and pestilent Morpork on the Wildershire side. Yes. Although the pestilence is quite democratic and in fact covers most of the city. It is said that all roads lead to Ang Morpork. Yeah. But this is It's not true. Correct. The truth is that all roads yeah. lead away from Ang. Get away, get away from there as quick as possible. Unsurprisingly. Uh, so we have to head to the square here. See, this this is another thing that kind of reminds me of Monkey Island. It uses that map style where you can watch him running on the map. Okay, so there's a bunch of old, like, dwarf guys here. We don't need to talk to them right now. 
But we do have to speak to... Oh, there's a uh, cat in my own throat. Double I believe. Yep. There's a wee guy. Just a wee guy. But this is who we want to talk to. We've also got uh, an Amazon warrior. Just to check something, actually. Uh, but who we want to speak to right now is the street urchin. You see? Because the good news with him is he teaches us, he teaches us some things. No, I already have a money pound. And give him mine back. Yeah. It is. It is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kind of. <laughs> oh, are you? If you say so. Starfish. Sure you are. Yeah, me too. <laughs> I could rob you again. Seriously. Yes, please. Tell me how you do it, or I'll turn your spleen into a tank of sea monkeys. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you deserved that, didn't you? Splattered. You can't see it anywhere. Right. So I've got to pickpocket some old men. <laughs> Didn't work. Hit me with, hit me with his own hat with his handbag. Oh, there we go. We've learned how to rob people. Isn't that exciting? <laughs> you know, I mean, that's what we've done. We've learned to rob people. But that's good. I mean, it's not, but... Uh, the next thing we need to do... If I remember rightly, I need to take one of these. Take a tomato. Place it nicely into my luggage. Close that off. There's a guy over here somewhere. It's a tax collector. So with the tax collector we want to take a tomato. Or a tomato if you prefer. And just give him a nice pelt in the mush. Because why not? Let's get another one. I enjoy pelting tax collectors in the face. Don't you? Oh, that one's got a worm in it. So you threw it on the ground. What are you doing? We just splattered a mouse too. And we need the worm. Yeah, I agree. Now we can pick up that worm if we can. There we go. Stick it in the luggage. It's Earthworm Jim without his clothing. I'm just going to do this quickly. Just a quick save. Nice and easy. Not difficult at all. As long as it doesn't suddenly say, you can't save. It's a long wait to do that. It takes a few minutes. <laughs> Excuse me. This seems to be taken quite a there we go. Okay, so the next thing that we need to do is we need to go to the psychiatricist. The psychiatricist's office. 
which I believe is that one there. Oh, look, that'll tell us. That doesn't work. The art of signposting is apparently a long, long day. Is it? <laughs> All right. Well, let's just go through the door then. See what we can find out. Shut up, sit down, no talking. Shut up, sit down, no talking. That's true, except that madness doesn't isn't infectious. Oh, the orangutan's up there. The orangutan. Remember. Quick chat with the troll. And listen to a little bit of uh, psychiatric evaluation. But this librarian, so all he's going to say is ook. Oh, he just got battered. That's not so good. Oh, you yibble, yibble the gig. I'm yeah, sorry. he's properly lost it. The eyes, the awful, knowing eyes. Yeah. What's happened to you? I couldn't take it. Not the brain's gone rotting. Another Tony Robinson voice. Get them off me. They're all green. You're mad. Now let me guess. You're a patient here, aren't you? Oh no. I'm just in the background colour. Are you? They're all really there for And golden their eyes. He's just completely Ah, jolly good. Lost it. Carry on. Now we're gonna leave. This seems like a good cue to see. It does. So what we do is we go outside, and then we come back. And when we come back, inside, we can get that net that was behind the troll. Go back in. And now he's moved. Shut up, sit down, no talk. If you're mad, you don't... Yeah, yeah, I get you. Now we can take this net that we couldn't take before. But we'll just drop it right into our luggage. It's like a basketball net. It's obviously not. Off we go. So where do we go now? We go this way. I believe we want to be heading towards a side street. Was it? Do we have to go out here? I'm trying to remember exactly what route I need to take, but there's a street we need to go to. I don't know. There's the broken drum. We're not going to the palace. There's an inn. The park. That place is not on the map, apparently. You can see the dragon flying around. There it goes. There we need to go. That street there. So yeah, the dragon's there. He's causing trouble. As dragons are wont to do. And here we are. And we want to go to I believe. We go all the way down here. There's like a toy shop. No, not there. That's a fishmonger. I believe there's like a toy shop up here somewhere. Is it that one? I can't remember if this is where I need to go. That's just a monk. We're not interested in him right now. And verily shall he bellow forth the ten, ten sacred, sacred names, names of, of, of the, the forbidden, forbidden dawn. We don't need to know that right now. I'm trying to remember. 
There's a shop up here we're supposed to go to. I can't remember where it is. Where is it? It's like right at the end of this road, I think. Should have gone to the other end of the street. There we go, toy shop. Just what we needed. Just one sec. Yes, so there we go, the toy shop is run by Santa Claus. Yeah. There's a lot of uh, things in the sale bin there. A lot of interesting items. Yeah. And we're going to stop. Make this the end of the first part of our playthrough. Of Discworld. Yes, we do want to overwrite. Uh, that's the end of the first part. Uh, this will be something to keep an eye out for on YouTube. Uh, well, if you're already watching it, of course, and <laughs> you don't, you don't need to keep your eye out for it. Um, but yeah, we'll have that up on uh, YouTube. Uh, Andrew Supernatus streams, as you already know, because you're here. Um, and remember to hit the subscribe button if you're enjoying what you're seeing. Click that bell be notified when I upload a new video and I'll catch you all again next time. Good night. I say good night. Could be watching it during the day. I don't know what I'm thinking. I know what I'm thinking. Goodbye.